Today's review item video, we're going to be making a, a lot of these coming up. Uh, maybe going ahead and working on some more today. But uh, Ravenstein, a lot of people have asked to talk about Ravenstein. They've asked to talk about Zelensky. I'm uh, going to talk a lot about Ravenstein in this video, a little bit about Zelensky, and going to present Ravenstein again to you, just kind of a recap. I'm going to beg you to watch AP Live. I'm going to beg you to watch the Agricultural Review video. You don't have to watch them all in one day. Um, you know, I don't know, whatever you're doing over the weekend, you can do some over that if you want to spread this stuff out. Uh, I think some of you are going in with the idea of let me knock it out an hour and a half. If you can do that, that's fine. But a lot of times I do my best work when I work for 45 minutes or so, get away from it for 45 minutes to an hour, work again. All right. Let's review Ravenstein. Well, who was Ravenstein? 1880, he came up with laws of migration. Why he believed people moved, where they moved, and why they moved, and who moved. So there are some of these. These are all 11 laws right here on this slide. You can find this in one note. And Ravenstein, the notes from January 27th. Seems like forever ago. But um, most migrants travel short distances. That's something that hopefully most of you remember. We, some of us have taken an FRQ on that. Migration proceeds step by step. Now, here is what I would suggest you do. In talking about what we talked about, what I talked about on the grades part today, you need to be thorough. You need to be detailed. Take every one of these and practice explaining. What does he mean migrants travel in short distances? And you're sitting there thinking, well, that's all you need to say, right? You've got to be able to, in two or three sentences, explain that fully. Like, according to Ravenstein, he believes in the law of distance, he believes in the idea of distance decay, and that people are more comfortable with places they're familiar with, so if they need to move and they have push and pull factors, they're likely to move somewhere 20 miles away as opposed to something 2,000, somewhere 2,000 miles away. And give an example in the real world, okay? Work on that for all of these. Practice it. Some of you need it more than others, okay? Some of you boys particularly need it, like, really, really bad. So work on that. Second one, migration goes step by step. That's a real good one to try to process too. Third, longer distance migrants prefer to go to great city centers, big cities. So if you're going to move a long distance, you go to big cities. Why? What's there? That's important. Is that still true today? That's important. Each stream of migration has a counter stream. So if there's people moving one way, there's always some people moving back according to him. That's still pretty relevant. I believe it is. Urban dwellers are less migratory than people in rural areas. That one is um, that one is not maybe as relevant in all countries today. See if you can talk about the difference in LDCs, stage twos and threes, and MDCs on that one. Would that statement Ravenstein made be more accurate on the MDCs or the LDCs? Thank Zelensky on that one as well. What would he say about it? Bottom line is, I think what you're going to find, I hope what you're going to find, is that in, that would be rather accurate if you lived in a stage two country. In a stage four and five, that statement is not likely accurate anymore. Okay, Females are more migratory than males in internal migration. Again, I think that's probably most accurate in the less developed countries, but males are more common in international migration. I think overall that's still true, but it's true the most um, in your poorer countries, your LDCs. Large towns owe more of their growth to migration than natural increase. That, for the most part, is pretty true today. Uh, it's particularly true in the, the rich world. Matter of fact, we did some study on this earlier in the semester. If you'll remember, America's big cities are only growing mainly thanks to immigration. Many people who've lived in America's cities 30 years ago, many of those people have moved out. And the birth rates are not that high, but immigrants, when they move to America, typically move in those big cities, which also then helps you understand the, the difference in politics in the big cities and the rural areas and the suburbs. Okay, so large towns owe more of their growth to migration than natural increase. I think that's still pretty um Pretty true. Whereas if you're not a large town, more a rural area, you're more likely to have a higher natural increase anyway. Remember also, good time to review, what is the demographic accounting equation? Remember that? 
What's it do for us? Can you explain what the demo? I mean, pause this and practice that. If that can you explain the purpose of the demographic accounting equation? Birth rate minus death rate plus immigration minus immigration. But what's the purpose? What does it tell a country? Where does that information come from? Review, census, right? Every 10 years in the United States, we also use it to redraw political boundaries. Gerrymandering can come from that. Look how this is review. This is among your groups what I'm trying to change the mindset of just keep going and going and going and never be never be satisfied. Say, yeah, that's good. Now let's go on. Let's push another way. What's it got to do with this? And hopefully you'll keep pushing to some things you're not comfortable with, not, not really good with right now. Next one, volume of migration increases with the development of industry and commerce as transport improves. I think that's pretty accurate, has been historically, but also I think you could skip down to the last one. The main causes of migration are economics. Money's the big pull factor. Can be a big push too. You know, and so when you look at, you know, how's how think about what's happening in the world right now with the COVID-19 scare and the pandemic and all that. Long term, how is that going to impact the movement of people? Okay. How is that going to impact the movement of people? So I think those two tie together. And then most migration is from the agricultural areas to centers of commerce and industry. That's somewhat true if you're in a lower developed country, maybe not others. So that's a review of Ravenstein's laws. Now, I thought of some different things that would be beneficial to you guys. And here's what I thought was most essential. I thought this would help you the most. I created some questions that I think will look something like the questions you could have on this AP test. Things that you can't necessarily look up and you have to connect the dots and do explanations. So you can obviously, I'll leave it up for a minute or two, but you can obviously do these by freezing the video just on this screen and practice this stuff. And I think the best thing is to let you guys practice it, not me answer it for you. And then you come back with one among each other, but also to me if you need to and say, hey, can you help me with this? Like, can you explain how Ravenstein's laws match up with Zelensky and in which stages? Like you might say, so Ravenstein says this happens. Zelensky says that happens too, but mostly in this stage, in this kind of country. That's what I'm talking But you've got to explain that. Also, if you explain, you got to explain the why. Zelensky thinks that happens because here's what's happening in that country, in that stage. Two, discuss any of Ravenstein's laws that don't apply as much in modern times. I, I gave you a few examples of that. Can you explain the why? Can you discuss the why? Here's what's different now, so it doesn't apply as much. And then thirdly, connect and explain, and I think this is huge, as many key geographic terms and concepts, especially migration ones, that are supported by Ravenstein as you can. Go through Ravenstein's laws and step migration being one example. Okay, so step migration is clearly inside of his laws. And then in at least three sentences or more, explain what step migration means and give an example of it. Like at a full example, don't say somebody moves somewhere and then somebody follows them. I know that's the gist of it, but walk somebody through it. Don't leave out a detail. So-and-so lived in Lima, Peru. You know, when they were 23 years old, they took a job in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And then after their while in Oklahoma, they decided that they wanted to move to make more money to St. Louis, Missouri. Go through the process and show it geographically. And come up with as many terms as possible. I'm making a list myself. I, I think right now I'm up to five terms that are directly connected to Ravenstein. I'm sure I'm missing some because I just brainstormed for like two or three minutes. You work on this. This will give you a little sampling of what some of these uh, simulated exam questions might look like. Hope this helps. Now, some of you have been asking for it. Let me know. I'm going to continue to work on questioning and these review sessions going forward and putting up some other helpful videos.